In this lecture, we are going to talk about data loader, which is very powerful tool to manage our own data set. In our previous lectures, we used the, this manual data feed. For example, we read all the data from a file, and then we divide them as X data and Y data. And in our chain loop, what we did is that we feed all data to the model, and then using this output, we compute the loss, and then we compute the gradients, and then we update our weights. In this example, feeding all data manually is not a big deal because the data size is small, it's something 700. But if you have to deal with thousands or millions of data set, we cannot feed all of them to the model and then we cannot compute the gradients for all data points. This is not efficient. So usually what we do is that we divide the entire data set into small batches with this batch size. And we go through each batch at once and then we compute the gradients, and then we update our weight. More formally, we can define epoch and batch size and iterations. One epoch is that if we can cover entire data, that is one epoch. But in order to cover entire data, we have to go through many batches. So each batch covering one batch is one iteration. So for example, if we have 1,000 training example, and then our batch size is 500, then we have two batches. So we, it will take two iterations to cover one epoch. So this is the definition of epoch, batch, batch size, and iterations. Then how are we going to implement this? How are we going to load our batches for our training data set? So it is possible to divide all the data set to small batches and managing this. But however, if you can just use data loader from PyTorch, we don't have to worry about the entire process, just this can be dealt with the data loader, so we don't have to worry about it. In our perspective, what we need is that just we want to get iterable data, and then from this iterable data, we just get batches. For example here, let's say this train loader is one uh, iterable, which you get from data loader, then we just put this one into for loop. And in each loop, what we do is that we get the batch data here, and then we divide them as inputs and labels, and then we wrap with the variables, and then we can use these inputs and labels for our training cycle. And then making this custom data order for our own data set is extremely simple. So we just need to provide only two things. One is get item. For given index, we just return our item. And then also here we need to provide what is the size of the data, and that's it. In order to do that, we probably need three steps. First step in, in it, we need to download and read data and so on. We do some process in here. And then we return one item for given index, and then also we return the data links. And then this we can make as a separate class, which extends data set class. So for example, in our diabetes data sets, in, in it, what we need is that we just read this uh, data and then load into x and y and then we compute this length easy and then we turn our numpy array to torch tensor and this is the commands torch dot from the numpy and then we save that as x data and y data this is our initialization for uh, the data and then get item basically for given index we return this item and x data and then y data and then length we just return our length and then how can i use this one in our program so we just call class uh, make instance of the data diabetes data sets like this data sets and then we feed this one to the data loader and then we can decide what is the batch size and then shuffling is extremely useful when you train the model so we shuffle our data and then if you if you want to use this uh, loader for multiple processes we need the number of workers this is our entire implementation so this part is the, our custom data loader and then we create instance for that and then we feed that to data loader and then we create our training loader and this train loader is just used in our training loop so here inside the for loop we just use them and each iteration we get a one batch so we divide them as input and labels and we use them for our training so if you want we can divide this one as a separate file 
and then all the other models that are using this data set can just import this file and class and use them without knowing all the details. In similar manner, in the PyTorch actually provide a lot of data set loaders already implemented, for example, MinList, Coco, and many other famous benchmark sets. If you want to use this MNIST data set for your model, you don't have to download this manually or read these image files by yourself. We can just use implemented data sets, MNIST, and then give them which directory we want to use, and then all the rest will be taken care of this implementation. And then once we have this data set, and then we feed this one to the data loader here, and then we can decide what will be the batch size that you want to use, and then you want to shuffle. And then once we have this data train loader, we can just use them inside of the roof. So each iteration, basically we can get one batch size data and target, and then we can use them in our training cycle. And once again, there are many data sets available here. So you can play around and see um, how easy to use this data set using PyTorch. As an exercise, you can check out this existing data set. And also, you can build your own data set with a very, very simple implementation. So as an exercise, you can try to build a titanic data set for your own uh, data loader. And then using this data loader, you can build a simple classifier. In our next lecture, we're going to talk about softmax classifier.